Welcome to part four of this series on in-situ concrete compressive strength assessment, NDT only. So now we are going to look at what EN 13791 says about strength assessment using NDT only. The problem may arise that on some structures it is simply not possible to take cores. So what do we do now? Luckily, the standard covers this eventuality also. So now we're going to look at strength assessment only using NDT. The method is called the screening test. It is an assessment based on a predetermined relationship between the non-destructive test and the compressive strength. It may be used in case of doubt to confirm the concrete in the structure conforms to a specified compressive strength class. The concrete can be accepted based on this test, but not rejected. Failure to pass the screening test means that core tests would be necessary. A generic relationship developed for the rebound hammer is provided in the standard. Here we can see the workflow for the screening test. We begin by doing NDT measurements at a minimum of nine test locations. We identify the lowest NDT value. We calculate the median NDT value. And using this information, we determine the compressive strength class. In practice, it's a very simple procedure, and it looks like this. We begin by doing NDT measurements at a minimum of nine test locations. We look what is the lowest value and we work out what is the median of all of the values. It's as simple as that. The final step is to compare these two values with the table, and I'm taking the example table provided in the standard. The lowest value is 62, the median value is 69. So the compressive strength class is the lower of these two results. So in this case, I can confirm this concrete to being at least a C5060 concrete. Now let's apply this procedure to our raw data example. The first step is to sort the rebound data from highest to lowest. I can then easily see the lowest value, which is 30.8, and the median value, which is the value bang in the middle, 35.5. And now it's just a simple matter of checking the values against the lookup table. So the lowest value is 30.8, the median value is 35.8, so my strength class is C1215. When it comes to assessing the compressive strength class in case of doubt, EN13791 recommends the following sequence to reduce cost. The first step is to do the screening test. This is a pure NDT test very cheap to perform and if the concrete already passes at this stage then great if the concrete doesn't pass this then you can go on to use ndt testing plus core data you already have the ndt information to take the few cores that you need if this fails then you can go on to use more extensive core data the eagle eyed among you may have noticed in the two examples I used, I used two different lookup tables. So I'd like to say something about the screening test generic relationship. This procedure was introduced in Germany as far back as 2008 in the National Annex. At that time, an R-value lookup table was introduced based on data collected with the Prosec N-type hammer. In 2014, a Q-value lookup table was introduced based on data collected with the Prosec Silverschmidt N-type hammer. And these are the two tables I referred to. And then in 2019, this method was introduced into the main body of the EN 13791 standard, justified by the German experience. Here you can see the data that was made available by Prosec to the standards bodies for making the Q-value generic relationship. This data was collected 
from independent validation tests around the world, primarily in Germany, China and Japan. And here you can see the two generic relationships side by side. To finish, I would like to say something about rebound hammer technologies for those who are not familiar with it. Here you can see the original Schmidt OS8000, which is a digital R-value hammer, and the Silver Schmidt OS8200, which is a Q-value hammer. Both types of hammer work on the same principle. We perform an impact to measure a rebound value, and we convert this using a correlation curve into a compressive strength. The original Schmidt was invented by Prosec in the 1950s, and it measures a rebounded distance. The Silver Schmidt was invented by Prosec in 2007 and uses an optical measurement of the velocity difference before and after the impact. The Q-value hammers have significant advantages. It has a much shallower correlation curve. With an R-value hammer, after about 50-60 MPA, the correlation curve becomes quite steep so a small variation in the rebound value leads to a large variation in the strength estimation. With Q-value hammers, because of the shallow curve, a small variation in the Q-value leads to only a small variation in the compressive strength. So this gives greater accuracy at higher strengths. The screening test that I've just described has been integrated into the Schmidt rebound hammer app. So from the file manager, we can simply select the different test locations in the test region and then choose to export the EN13791 screening test as a PDF file. The PDF file is generated automatically and I can save it or share it as I wish. And here we can see the automated test report with the compressive strength class indicated. And finally, what about UPB? Well, this method may also be applied to UPV testing. There is, however, the lack of an established generic relationship. So to all of the researchers out there who may be watching this video, I'm sure everybody would be very happy if someone would develop such a relationship.